Welcome back to Whisper Gaming ASMR. And if you're new here, just so you know, I upload two versions of all my videos. One with quiet gameplay audio and one without. So if you'd prefer to watch the other version, it is linked at the top of the video description below. But now that that is out of the way, uh, this is going to be a bit of a different video. But first, let me pop in this Jawbreaker. Because it is going to be a hard candy video. It's also going to be a two-part video, and I know this because quick uh, peek behind the scenes, I just recorded two videos over an hour long, and OBS messed up again, and the files are unusable, so I'm recording these for a second time. But this video is going to be different because I I already recorded the gameplay footage that you're watching yesterday. And I did that so I could do a ramble video. Which a lot of people have been suggesting lately or, or requesting. And I didn't want to get distracted talking about stuff in the game. So I recorded this gameplay footage and now I'm going to ramble about my trip to Portugal, which I've been wanting to do since I got back two weeks ago. But quick note about the gameplay footage. There are a lot of fails in this footage. I do a lot of stupid things, especially towards the end of the video when I go into was 
very sore and I did not sleep very well at all. But my girlfriend seemed to have no issues sleeping and she stayed up and got the in-flight meal and everything like that, but we landed around 9.30. It was all relatively smooth getting there. And then we had to go through customs, which... Oh, we landed in Porto, by the way. Porto was the first city we went to. I think the Portuguese call it O Porto, which I think translates to the port, but I'm not positive. So we landed, and luckily... It was a pretty small airport and wasn't very busy. So we were at the front of the line to go through customs and it, it only took a couple of minutes, which was way faster than I was expecting. And then we had to get our checked bags and they came out pretty quick. But my girlfriends came out right away. I mean, the bags in general, all of them came out pretty quick. My girlfriend immediately found hers but all the bags came out and the carol still stopped and my bag was still not there I was like, this is my nightmare we have a nine day trip in Portugal and I lose my bag first thing but luckily I noticed a lot of other people did not have their bags yet either so we waited and after about like 10 or 15 minutes the carousel started up again and more bags came out and I eventually got mine so It felt like a, a tragedy was averted there, so that was good. And then we had, I think, about a 15 or 20 minute Uber ride to where our Airbnb was. But we couldn't check in until around 3 o'clock. And I think we got to where our Airbnb in Pardo was around, probably around 11. But thankfully, the people that had the Airbnb had some type of office where they said we could drop our bags until we could check in. So we met up with the hosts and dropped our bags off and then kind of went around to explore. So I'm a pretty go-with-the-flow type of guy. I didn't really do a ton of research before going to Portugal. Like, if it was up to me, I would just wander around and found stuff. But my girlfriend likes to plan things out, and she's really into TikTok, which, thankfully, I've avoided getting addicted to so far. Um, YouTube is definitely my addiction, though. But anyway, she had been researching Portugal for months, so she had a huge list of places she wanted to go to. So the first one we went to... Uh, the first one we went to was called, uh, I think, the Mystic Cafe, which I guess is pretty popular. I think it's like a pretty old building and seems to be, I think, a, populous, a popular tourist place. So we went there and we're expecting a really long line. But luckily, we got there what, probably around 11.30 on a Tuesday. And they're like, oh, there's a wait. They're like, it'll take like four minutes. I was like, in America, I feel like they wouldn't even say there's a wait. They'd just be like, your table will be ready in a minute. But anyway, so we got in relatively quick. And um, I'm not much of a coffee drinker. I'm more of a tea person, but... I looked at the menu and I saw this thing called a, I think a bomb bomb coffee, or a coffee bomb bomb. I, I looked it up, I guess it's like a Spanish coffee drink. But it's espresso, chocolate, and I think condensed milk. Some type of like, very sweet cream. But I got that and it was really, really good. Um, it was sweet. It was really sweet, and yeah, I had espresso, so I had a decent amount of caffeine, and I just really liked it. 
this a lot. I think it would have been even better if they had a cold version, but I liked it a lot. Just unfortunately, I didn't find that any of the other um, places we went to the rest of the time were in Portugal. And I think my girlfriend might have got something for food, but I didn't really see much that appealed to me. I'm a pretty picky eater, except when it comes to sweets. Um, so I ordered, they have like a famous pastry in Portugal, and I heard it pronounced different ways, but I think one way to say it is a pasta genata. So I ordered that right away, and it lived up to the hype. It was very good. It's like this egg custard filled tart and really sweet. I like the texture. Um, yeah, so that's the first thing I had to eat there. So after we spent some time there, we kind of walked around and started to exploring Porto a little bit. But I was getting hungry since all I'd had was that pasta genata. And my girlfriend had eaten on the plane, but I was trying to sleep, so I skipped the meal. And like I said, I'm a picky eater. I have, I tell people I have the, the dietary preferences of a five-year-old. Um, I like basically like chicken, pizza, pasta, Chinese food, things like that. So in Porto, they have what is called the world's, the world's most beautiful McDonald's. I think it's in like an old bank building or something. It's in some old building. But we were near that, so we went and checked it out. And I'll say it does live up to the title. Uh, there's like stained glass and stuff like that, so I don't really eat McDonald's much anymore. I used to really like their chicken selects, which I think they later rebranded to like the buttermilk tenders or something like that. Buttermilk breaded tenders, but anyway. That's all I'd eat at McDonald's. And then they discontinued it during COVID, so I haven't eaten there in a while. But we went there and they had these things called Chicken Delights, which I thought were chicken selects. They looked a lot like it. So I ordered a couple orders of those and some fries and a Coke. And um, unfortunately the Chicken Delights weren't like chicken selects, they're kind of just like longer, thinner chicken nuggets, but they're still pretty good, especially when you're hungry. But something about the Coca-Cola, I don't know why I just said that's so weird. Um, something about the Coca-Cola in Portugal is way better than here. Um, maybe they have like the Mexican version of Coke or whatever, where they use the real sugar. But the Coke was really good and the fries were good and yeah. I come from like a very rural, small town, so uh, just as I've gotten older and older, I've kind of just embraced my white trash heritage. Um, so yeah, my first meal in Portugal was at a McDonald's, but we kind of just walked around, explored, found like a music store with some cool guitars and instruments and stuff, and then eventually we um, were able to check into our Airbnb. So we went and did that. The Airbnb was really nice. Uh, the only problem is in Portugal and maybe in Europe in general, like when something is the second floor in America, you would think you have to go up one flight of stairs, like the first floor is the ground level and the second floor is the first level up. But in Portugal, the second floor, like the ground floor is ground, would be, I guess, floor zero. And then it's floor one and floor two. So our place was like what we would have considered the third floor, which wasn't the end of the world, but we both had like 50 pound big suitcases. And then I had a really heavy backpack, plus I packed a banjo. And my girlfriend, had a heavy backpack as well, so we way overpacked for the trip, so basically getting in and out of the Airbnbs was the worst part, but that's the worst part of the trip. Uh, we were pretty lucky. 
so the Airbnb was nice, full kitchen, central air, living room, bedroom, and then there's like a outdoor private area, and then we had like a rooftop area too, so it was really nice. So we kind of relaxed there, went and grabbed some snacks and had some wine and stuff, and then, well, then we went and explored a little more and went to this famous sunset spot for the sunset that like overlooks the water and a couple bridges. And that was really beautiful. There's a bunch of people there and music playing and stuff. So, um, yeah, we did that. And then after we went to this pizza place that had really good reviews, either called Farina or Farina. I think it's Farina. But the food was great. We split a bottle of wine. I uh, got some appetizers. We each got our own like small pizza. And then they had a dessert cooler with things like um, like chocolate mousse and tiramisu and a bunch of different things. And then they had mini versions of all of them. So we tried a mini version of all the different desserts and kind of like a sampler plate. And it was, it was really good. It was probably one of the best dining experiences I've ever had. And then after that, like the bill was $70, I think, for both of us. Which, if we would have got something like that in New York, would have easily been $200. So, after that, we were kind of... I think we actually went to, like, one bar after that, which was kind of, like, chill. There weren't many people there, but... Had a cool atmosphere, so we just went and got one drink. And then, we went back, uh, to our Airbnb. It had been a long day of traveling, so we just went to bed. And then the next day, we went and explored the waterfront. Um, just checked out some like different sites, like some different street art, and things like that. Um, we went to this place called The Sandman. I think it's a wine company. But they had this like bar that was also a hostel. And they had a bunch of tents outside by the water, so we went there and got some food and wine. And then we did a tour of, I guess it's not a factory, I don't know what you'd call it, but a place where they make port, which is like a fortified dessert wine. It's wine that's like 19% alcohol and it's really sweet, um, which neither of us had really tried port before, but that's what Porto is famous for. It's the name Port from being in Porto. But we did a tour of that, which was pretty cool. Getting to see how it's all made. And then there's a port tasting at the end. And neither of us were expecting to like it, especially me, because I'm not much of a drinker. Like, I typically don't even drink wine or beer, but the wine in, in Portugal was good enough that I actually enjoyed it. So I did the port tasting. I was pleasantly surprised that it was pretty good. And we also got to meet some other people. Like we met some people from Canada and some other countries that were traveling to Portugal. So that was nice. Um, and then after the port tasting, we went back to our Airbnb to shower and get ready for dinner. Um, so yeah, after I showered, the bathroom, like, I don't know if all the locks in Europe or Portugal are like this, but all the ones I encountered, you can really, like, lock them. Like, in America, there's usually, I don't know if you'd call it a switch or something, but there's, like, a tab that when you're on the, like, inside of a locked door, you can lock and unlock it like that without the key. But all the keys in Portugal... I mean, all the locks in Portugal, like, you could only lock and unlock them with the key on both sides of the door. In the bathroom door in the Airbnb, didn't really seem to stay closed well, unless you lock the door. Um, I 
guys realize there's like kind of a humming sound in the background. I don't know what that is. Um, but yeah, so you basically have to lock. I had to lock the door with the key on the inside to make sure the door would stay closed. So after I showered the second night, the key would not unlock the door. It was turning, but it was not moving the lock. And it's like a deadbolt lock. So there's like a big piece of metal on the wall. And I, my phone was charging outside the bathroom. I didn't like have anything. And thank God my girlfriend wasn't out on the roof. Um, so I like yelled her and I'm like, I'm completely locked in here with the key. That won't turn. I was trying to stay calm, and I think I stayed calmer than she did. She was like freaking out and started like pulling on the door handle. I'm like, stop doing that. Like, it's not the handle, it's the lock. The handle has nothing to do with it. And she ends up pulling the door handle off the door, which was not helpful at all. But anyway, after like 10 minutes of messing with the key, I finally got to unlock, which was a huge relief. Because I'm like, I have no idea what we're going to do if I'm stuck in this bathroom. Um, so yeah, that was a little stressful. And yeah, then I had to figure out how to fix the door handle without a screwdriver. So I had to like use part of a key and like part of a, a coin and like slowly screw it back in. It was, yeah, that was a pain in the ass, but whatever. And then we didn't really have a set place to go for dinner, so we looked up somewhere to go get food. And, um, we ended up going to this Mexican place that, it had really good reviews, but then we got there and it, like, the vibe was weird. It was really quiet. There was, like, only one other table of people there. And when we ordered nachos, basically seemed like what you'd get from Lunchables. It was just like a bunch of like chips that clearly just came out of a bag and then there's nothing on them. It's just like salsa and guac and sour cream on the side that you just dipped the chips in. So for like this place is not not it. Um, the margaritas were okay but they weren't great. So there's this like I wish I could remember the name of it. There's this, like, fancy Italian restaurant nearby that we originally had um, reservations to at, like, 7 o'clock, but we went and saw the sunset instead, and that took into, like, 8.30, and we got the later port tasting, so that didn't end until almost 7. But anyway, we missed our reservation for the fancy place. Or like, it's just around the block, we should go check it out. It was like 10.30 at night at this point. And we got there and luckily there was no wait, so we got a table. It was like fancy Italian food. And again, I have the palate of a five-year-old, so everything on the menu is way too fancy for me, but I found a chicken, a chicken dish that looked pretty good. It came with like truffles and mushrooms and all these different things. I wasn't really expecting to like it, but I ordered that and we got some um, appetizers and in Portugal you had to pay for the water at the table and you had to like pay for the bread and the butter and they all that stuff cost money, but we got bread and water and all that stuff and um, yeah, we didn't split a bottle of wine. I think we each got a few Moscow mules chicken dish came and I was very pleasantly surprised. It was really good and I even, um, I think it was like a truffle chorizo. I could be completely wrong on that. It was some long, almost, I don't know, it was like between a noodle and bread, um, like kind of like a tortilla almost consistency. It was like a tube filled with truffles or something. I don't know. I'm not very culinarily inclined. But even that was really good. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised and yeah, it was a really fancy dining experience and I think even that, I think the bill was like a little under a hundred dollars for both of us. Which in New York would have easily been a four hundred dollar bill. 
So we went there, and I think by the time we finished eating, it was like almost midnight. I think we went to go check out a couple of bars, but I don't know, it was a Wednesday night and everything seemed dead, so we just went back to our Airbnb. And then the next day, we went to this place, kind of like on the other side of Bordeaux. It was like this, these gardens that had like sculptures, and there was like a modern art museum, and they had this like treetop walk, which was cool. It was like a boardwalk through, like at, through the tops of trees. I guess that's pretty self-evident. But that was really cool. It kind of like felt like you're in Jurassic Park almost. The art was cool. The sculptures were cool. Um, and then they had like a, a pasture with these like cows with big horns and sheep and stuff like that. So that was really cool. We spent a few hours there. And then I went to go see this big art installation called it's called Sheet Changes. It's like a 20 ton net or something by the water that changes with the wind. It was, I thought that was going to be cooler than it was, but it wasn't too bad. And then we went and got some dr uh, drinks and snacks at this like bar that was right on the beach, but like the whole side of it was glass. So that was pretty cool. Then we went back to the Airbnb and showered and got ready and went and saw the sunset again at like a cool sunset place by the water and got some drinks um, and like a cheese plate and stuff at this bar by the water that my girlfriend really wanted to go to so that was nice and then we went back to the pizza place from the first night for dinner a second time because it was so good um yeah, we left up to the hype. And then the next day um, was when we went to Lisbon. But the first part of this has already taken up a half an hour, so I will save the Lisbon, Sintra, and Lagos part of the trip for the next video. Um, I hope this is okay. I literally just talked about all this stuff for an hour. And then it did not record, so I'm doing it again. So I'm a little more articulate this time, I think. This video was, I think, about 35 minutes last time, and I got it down to about a half an hour. But I'd really appreciate um, your feedback if you like these videos like this. Um, with me recording the gameplay audio, uh, the gameplay footage first, and then just rambling without really talking about the uh, gameplay at all. I have some ideas for some other ones. I was thinking about messing around with the chat GPT and having it create some original bedtime stories and reading those. And then I could also just ramble about different things, about stuff going on in my life or fun facts about different topics or just things I'm interested in. So rambles are something I want to explore, so let me know if that's an avenue I should go down or if you don't really like them. But if you made it to this point in the video, I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you're trying to fall asleep, I hope you're not hearing this, but if you are, there'll be some other videos linked at the end of this video that you can listen to and uh, hopefully you'll be asleep by the end of one of those. But make sure to come back for part two where I talk about the second half of my trip. And uh, yeah, I just really appreciate you. And I hope I'll see you in the next one. Good night and goodbye.